Today we're going to be diagnosing and repairing the alternator on this Mazda 3. And I bought this Mazda 3 with a completely flat battery and I swapped the battery out for a known good one. Now, while driving it here, eventually the car did die and it was showing some symptoms of some sort of an electrical issue like it doesn't have enough power. In order to rule out the alternator, we're going to check it using a multimeter. We're going to first start the vehicle and then check the voltage here. It should be around 14 volts if the alternator is working properly. So I've got the old battery here in the trunk that I took out. I had it on the charger overnight and I only got it to about 4.3 volts. All right, here it goes. Cold start, Mazda 3. All right, I got my trusty battery charger on there, set to boost. All right, so as you can see, I was able to boost the car to get it started. Now we're going to remove the charger. Now right away, you can hear the kid wants to die. Okay, I'm going to measure the voltage. And you can see the voltage has dropped down to 9 volts. So right away, we can see we've got a bunch of air lights on the dashboard including this battery light here and that indicates that there's an issue with the charging system also the lights are kind of flickering on the dashboard so i'm going to ask my wife here to give it a little bit of gas maybe rev it up to about four doesn't even want to rev it now we're going to load it up turn on the light okay, it's dropped to 9.3 volts turn on the radio drop to 9 volts and then now turn on the fan uh, we're still about 9 volts 8 volts so you can see as i'm applying more and more electrical load that the battery voltage is slowly dropping and the alternator can no longer keep up. All right, so make sure the first thing you do is disconnect your battery. I've got mine removed and it's on the charger. Now over here, we've got the belt tensioner. We just need to remove this belt here so we can get it off the alternator, which is this thing down below here. You can see that there is a 12 millimeter bolt that we need to remove here at the top of the alternator and the rest is done from down below. So 14 millimeter socket on this tensioner over here. Now we're gonna turn it to the counterclockwise position. So with a little bit of penetrating oil inside of there, you're going to have another go at it. And just push this belt off here and then release it. Yeah, we're probably going to have to replace that at some point. And you can see down over here on top of the alternator, I've got my 12 millimeter ratchet with an extension here. I can break that loose. I just come with my power ratchet and remove that bolt. Down below here, you can see there's clear access to the alternator. There is a 12 millimeter bolt up inside of here. And then two 12 millimeter bolts over here that's easy to remove the harder things are going to be this electrical connector as well as that electrical connector up at the top there all right you can see i've got my ratchet on the first 12 millimeter bolt up at the top there and i tried to break it free and rust here is a bad thing check this out i broke the bolt so the rest of it's inside of the engine block so because of that i'm going to use more penetrating oil in these bolts all right let's see if we can get this bottom one out let's try to get this guy out what might be a bit easier. Oh shoot, I broke that one too. Oh shit. Now this car did not have a splash guard underneath, hence why I probably salt and all that stuff went in here and corroded this bolt. You can see this is the last bolt from underneath here. It's also broken as well. So all we're gonna have is one good bolt up at the top here. If you wanted to fix this, it looks like it goes into the engine block. So you'd have to re-thread that. And that's how you turn a quick alternator swap into a really bad day of re-threading and drilling out bolts. All right, so once you use your screwdriver to pry that off, there's your positive terminal. Got my 12 mil on there. Save that nut. Now this plastic piece here has these tabs on it. All right, and there's the cable removed. I can move that out of the way. And if you look just up here, you'll see there's another electrical connector here that we have to squish with the screwdriver and pry it out. It's just going to go in like this with the screwdriver, press down, and now I can wiggle the connector out, just like that. And since all of my bolts are disconnected, I can probably take this alternator off. All right, so I have the pry bar in there, and I can remove this alternator down the bottom here. And with the alternator removed, you can see this here, here, and way up here are the three bolts that broke and it's actually part of the engine block so if you need to drill that out and retap it you probably should remove the front end to get better access all right so this here's the old alternator that i've pulled out as well as all my souvenirs and i went to the junkyard and pulled out another alternator from another mazda i don't really care because this is just a beater car and i want something cheap just to get it back on the road now taking a close look at that connector you need to use your screwdriver here to push on this little tab and then it will pop out just like that it's a little difficult to do in the car now i did grab the old bolts from the junkyard car it was not nearly as rusty as my car here so when i am ready to take the car apart and drill the tap the new holes i got the bolts ready right here all right so here we've got the old alternator we're going to go ahead and take it apart i'm just going to be taking a quick look at what's inside i do have a more detailed video on how an alternator works so you might want to check that out above take out all these bolts from the face here just like in the car the bolts snapped 
All right, so we've got that casing removed there. Now taking a look inside this alternator here, you can see we've got this rotor here which spins with the crankshaft through the belt and it's going to form a big electromagnet that is actually rotating. The electromagnet itself is actually powered through these two slip rings here through the two brushes over on this side of the alternator. Now that you've got a big electromagnet rotating inside of here, it's going to induce current in these coils here. There's actually three set of coils here wound around iron cores and that's going to produce your three phase power and one here for your ground. Now looking inside of here we've got the two brushes here that contact the rotor we've also got the diodes over there where those three on the rotor are going to connect to and that's going to convert it over from AC to DC and then we've got our voltage regulator here which is what plugs into the ECU. Now once your three phase alternating current comes off of the generator part it's going to come through these diodes over here to get converted over to DC and smoothened out so that it can power your battery through this terminal. Now the voltage regulator itself which is controlled through the ECU is what's going to control the amount of power that's going to these brushes over here here and thus how much electromagnetic field this rotor can generate and thus how much voltage comes out of you. That's why when you're diagnosing a dead battery or a bad alternator you should not unplug your battery from here because your battery is the one that's supplying current to the ECU and therefore your voltage regulator won't be regulating the voltage and then you'd be susceptible to voltage spikes which could fry the electronics in your car. Now some of the common failure points in these alternators and you can see right here this brush looks pretty worn out. It does have a spring on it to compensate for a little bit of wear as it wears along the edge of the slip ring over here. In addition things like your voltage regulator itself could actually burn out and stop regulating the amount of voltage causing spikes in the system. We've got the diodes here which are solid state so those don't typically wear out as fast. Now some of the more mechanical failures you could have are bad bearings. There's a bearing on this side and I can feel this one feels really really sticky and then of course there's a bearing inside of the housing over here. Depending on where the alternator is located in the vehicle if you've got a power steering pump or an oil leak that's leaking down on the alternator itself well that's not going to go well with all of these electronics, the brushes as well as the coils and that's also going to cause the alternator to fail prematurely. Also having a dead battery can take its toll on the alternator over time because instead of it charging the battery it sees it more as a load and then you overstress your alternator. Now luckily most of these times these alternators are rebuildable unless if yours is rusty like mine and these bolts snap off you can replace the voltage regulator as well as the brushes yourself. That often is a lot more budget friendly compared to putting in a brand new alternator. Alright I'm going to put this back together so I can get back my core charge. Alright so I'm going to lift this alternator back inside of here. So I kind of got the uh, alternator caught up down in there. I'm going to go ahead and put this top bolt in there. Alright so I caught the bolt down on the alternator. I'm going to snug it down. Alright so now that the alternator is nice and snug I'm going to go ahead and push the electrical connector in and now bring my positive lead of my electrical connector here and then thread on that nut and then snug that down nice and tight and while you're under here you're going to want to route the belt up and under the water pump and then back around this alternator over here. Alright now back up at the top here I'm going to put my 14 socket on this idler pulley pull it back and then loop the belt around it all right, now we're going to install the battery. I had this battery sitting on the charger. Here's our positive terminal. And then reinstall the negative terminal over here. Just snug that down. All right, first start. Push the clutch down. All right, it starts right up. Uh-oh, it died. All right, we're going to start it up again. Okay, starts up. I don't see any battery light. Now we're gonna let it sit here and relearn idle and charge up the battery. All right, now we're gonna check the voltage at idle. And you can see we're just above 14 volts, which is perfect. That means the alternator is now charging the battery and the vehicle is idling perfect and it's not dying. Now we're just gonna put a little bit of load on that alternator. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the headlights, maybe turn on the blower motor and the air conditioning and turn on the radio. Maybe turn on some of these interior lights here. Now in the start. And we can also turn on the wipers here. And we're gonna go check the voltage. And we're gonna measure the voltage. And it drops about 12.7 volts, which is still acceptable. We don't want it to drop below battery voltage. And that's pretty much how you diagnose and replace the alternator on your Mazda 3. Just a quick, cheap, easy repair because this is just an older car. Now we are gonna be fixing up this old car, so make sure you stay tuned and subscribe if you wanna see more videos just like this one.